All right, hello, fifth graders. This is the third part of our reading in the book Explorers, Triumphs and Troubles. This um, section is about the Americas, and there are, it is a longer section, and there are multiple different things that we need to think about. There can be multiple different storylines, um, historical events. So while we are reading, let's try to think about these things. Keep in mind both sides of the story. This can be a reoccurring theme for us. Cortez and his true and Montezuma and the Aztec people. What motivated Cortez to act the way he did? Why do you think Spanish conquistadors were so fascinated with finding El Dorado? And think about how an explorer might be viewed as an invader. That's going to be a really um, prevalent theme throughout this whole thing is how an explorer might be viewed as an invader and how there's different sides to every story. All right, some vocabulary we will be talking about. Conquistadores um, is a Spanish word that means conqueror. So basically it is a group of explorers who of Spanish descent who are trying to conquer or and they did not they do not come peacefully. They are armed and they are trying to take over land. We we'll talk more about El Dorado in the reading so keep eye for that that will be explained then and expedition we talked about earlier it is a quest or a journey in order to find something specific with a specific goal in mind all right so keep these things in mind and we are going to get started reading all right Okay, the Americas. Cortez and the Aztecs. In 1504, at the age of 18, Hernan Cortez traveled to the New World from Spain. Like many Spaniards who went to the New World, Cortez was a conquistador. The word comes from the Spanish word for conqueror. The conquistadors did not aim to become peaceful farmers. Think about some of the other, the differences between um, some of the other explorers that we learned about earlier and now the conquistadors. They went to find riches, and they weren't afraid to fight for them. These riches could sometimes can, were gold or silver or valuable lands, which they took from the people they conquered. The conquistadors quickly took over the largest Caribbean islands, killing or enslaving local people. Their next step was to take over the mainland of Mexico. All right, so you see where they already took over, and they're... Um, so they're out in the Caribbean here, and they made this journey here, and this is where they currently are. Their goal is to take over the mainland of Mexico. By mid-1519, Cortez and his men had reached the land of the Tlaxicans. You can see it right then. All right. Cortez on the mainland. In 1519, Cortez led the first conquistador expedition to Mexico in search for riches. With him were about 600 well-armed Spaniards. Cortez soon heard stories about the huge, powerful Aztec Empire. The Aztec temples were said to be full of gold. On hearing this, Cortez decided to leave for Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital city, to find his fortune. Taking sides, on their journey to Tenochtitlan, the conquistadors fought battles with the people whose lands they were crossing. Among them were the Tlaxicans, who fought very hard and almost defeated the conquistadors. However, the Tlaxican leaders then decided to join the Spanish conquistadors. Together, they made a large and powerful army to fight the Aztecs. Journey Fact File Date, 1519. Ships and fleet, 11. Number of men, 600, about 600. Weapons, swords, shields, crossbows. Danger, dangers, attack by local people and sickness. Notice how there's, there's some different dangers for the different regions. We'll talk about... Antarctica later, and there's some different dangers for here than there. Cortez reaches Tenochtitlan. When the joint forces of the conquistadors and Tlaxicans reached Tenochtitlan, the Aztec emperor Montezuma was not eager to meet them. He sent them gifts of gold, hoping that would make the Spanish go away. But the sight of gold only made the conquistadors more determined to gain riches. Finally, Montezuma could no longer hold the Spanish back, so he welcomed them to Tenochtitlan. Badly behaved guests. Cortez was technically Montezuma's guest, but he was a very badly behaved one. He soon took Montezuma prisoner. This was a normal tactic for conquistadors, who often captured local leaders and then forced them to rule as they wanted. 
Cortes had to leave Tenochtitlan in April of 1520 to fight off a rival group of conquistadors who also wanted to rule Tenochtitlan. When he was gone, a member of his army killed a large group of Aztec nobles. This caused the Aztecs to fight back, and the conquistadors had to flee. Should Cortes have attacked the Aztec Empire? What do you think? The Aztecs built their empire by attacking and conquering other people. So was Cortes only doing to the Aztecs what they had done to others? Mm, think about that. The capture of Tenochtitlan. After fleeing, the conquistadors and Tlaxicans soon returned. They surrounded Tenochtitlan, and in August 1521, it was captured from Aztecs. The huge Aztec empire became part of New Spain, and although many local rulers were left in place, the Spanish were in control. The gold, silver, and other wealth of the Aztecs now belonged to Spanish. Triumph. Cortes was a bold adventurer and a great leader. The gold and silver he got from Mexico made Spain rich and powerful, and once they had conquered the Aztec Empire, the Spanish left many local rulers in place. By August 20, I mean 1521, Cortes and the conquistadors had defeated the Aztec Empire. Or trouble. Here's the other's perspective. Cortes was a ruthless, cruel man and only interested in making himself rich. The Aztec Empire's wealth was taken back to Spain, leaving the local people with very little. Local leaders were controlled by the Spanish and could not make their own decisions. So again, we're getting both sides of the story. Think about what you think about those perspectives. All right. Now, as promised, we are going to start learning about the search for El Dorado. Almost as soon as they arrived in new in the New World, Spanish conquistadors became obsessed with a legendary figure named El Dorado, which is Spanish for the Golden One. He was said to be a local ruler with almost limitless supplies of gold, and the conquistadors wanted to get their hands on it. Expedition from Quito. In 1541, a group of 200 conquistadors, along with around 400 local people and a variety of horses and dogs, set off to hunt for El Dorado. They left the city of Quito in what is now Ecuador in February and headed towards the Andes Mountains. By December 1541, the explorers had crossed the Andes Mountains, but the expedition was rapidly running out of supplies. After 18 months, explorers reached the Coca River. They had spent much of these months wandering around in the rainforest trying to find information about the location of El Dorado. It's a year and a half. The conquistadors were now getting very hungry and they badly needed help. Their leader, Gonzalo Pizarro, decided that they should build a boat. The boat would travel downstream and the men would collect food and come back. Pizarro chose an officer named Francisco de Ornella to captain the boat. On December 26, 1541, Orlanana and 58 men set off to find help. Journey Fact File, 1541. 250 miles, um, time 18 months, dangers, cold mountainous pa paths, attacked by local people. Think about this, what do you think? Why did the conquistador keep searching for El Dorado? After leaving Quito, the conquistadors raided local villages for food, and they questioned the people living there to find out where El Dorado was. Might the villagers have realized that a good way to make the Spanish go away is to tell them that El Dorado was far away from the villages? Hmm, think about that. What do you think? All right. Downs train to Napo. At first, things did not go well for or Orlanana and his men. They got so hungry searching for food that they ate all the boiled. They ate the boiled soles of their shoes. Finally, they found a village and food, but instead of going back with the rest of the expedition as Pizarro had instructed. Orlanana and his men continued downriver away from the rest. Why did Orlanana continue down the river? Orlanana claimed that his men refused to return to their companions and the river's powerful flow made it impossible anyway. Was this true, or might Orlanana and his men have been dreaming of finding El Dorado alone? Hmm, think about it. Journey Fact File, 1541 to 1542. Distance, 3,700 miles. Time, 8 months. Danger, starvation, sickness, attack by local people. Alright. Amazon attack. 
Eventually, Orellana and his companions spilled out into a large river, which he named the Rio de Orellana. A fierce band of what they thought were women then attacked the explorers. The attackers were probably men from the Yagua people wearing grass sk skirts, but the story reminded people of mythical group of female warriors from ancient Greece called the Amazons. From then on, people started calling the river the Amazon, which is the name it still has today. The Atlantic Ocean. Eventually, or Orlanana and his men reached the Atlantic Ocean. They had turned north up the coast, and by September 11, 1542, they had reached the Spanish settlement of Cubagua Island, where they found safety. All right, think about the two perspectives here. Triumph. Orlanana was a brilliant explorer. He led his men on one of the history's most amazing journeys. They endured starvation, constant attacks, and illness to reach safety. Or trouble. Orlanana was a ruthless adventurer prepared to cheat and kill for wealth. He abandoned his companions on the Coca River and then blamed his own men for not turning back once they had found food. For the people of the Amazon, the arrival of the Spanish was a catastrophe. Many of the people who were not killed died later of European diseases, which were introduced by the Spanish. All right, that is the rest of the Americas. Next time we'll be learning about Antarctic um, expeditions. Reminder, let's go back to what we were thinking about. Now see if you can answer if you these questions now. Let's go. You keep in mind both sides of the story, Cortez and his true and troop crew and Montezuma. Do you now know what motivated Cortez to act the same way? Um, act the way he did, and why do you think Spanish conquistadors were so fascinated with finding El Dorado? And think about again how you think um, why an explorer might be viewed as an invader. All right, great job, you guys. You are doing great work. Keep it up.